My film is called Nutkin's Last Stand. It's about how in England the native red squirrels are being killed off by the American gray squirrels, which are introduced. Um, and sort of what drew me to the topic is it's about, <coughs> it ends up being about a lot more than squirrels. There's a lot that these people project onto the squirrels. So it ends up being about patriotism and war and invasion. It even ends up being a little bit about race because you've got these two squirrels that are just pretty much different and little more than color, but they bring out very different emotions in the local people there. I'm always drawn to stories that have sort of a really obvious metaphorical structure, and it sometimes can be kind of funny and ironic the way that the, uh, the metaphorical structure relates to the film. I went into the Abbey National Building Society, and that was in April of 2006, and I was waiting in the queue, and the adverts advertising whatever it was for their latest promotion were cardboard cutouts of grey squirrels, the American grey squirrels, and there was one about four foot high by the door. It felt almost like an invasion, and so I came out of line, stood in front of this CCTV and explained how angry I was and why I was angry and I even said I'm about to knock these things over which I did. For the, the people involved in this struggle they are they think about it in terms of, of war and invasion and they project feelings about national identity about British national identity and American national identity. The, the red squirrels are a lot more dainty and shy and they live in the woods and the greys will eat anything and they're bigger and they're sloppier and I definitely think there's a little bit of, especially at a time when, when uh, people all around the world were thinking about American imperialism, I think that some of that feeling about the Americans as, as uh, running roughshod over the whole world was being channeled into the feelings about the grey squirrels. This is a young female. That, that, that'll only be about seven months old. And what we've done yeah, we've shot it, we've shot it through the head. The back of the head straight in there. And that's it, the animal's dead straight away. I just basically a rodent with a different tail. Flying rodents, that's all law. Good for nothing. Apart from shooting. There's a Beatrix Potter character, Squirrel Nutkin, and that's um, everybody in England is Red Squirrel Nutkin, and so he's more than just the, the Red Squirrel's more than just an animal. It has this place in British arts and literature and lore, and I wanted to convey that with the with the title, even though I don't go into it too much. I just wanted to suggest that the Red Squirrel is more than just any old animal. It has this place in literature. Because what attracted me to the story was sort of its the, this metaphorical fairy tale element, I wanted to bring that out with my style. So everything is very composed, and the music is very epic, and sort of the music is very somber and military. And I wanted to sort of bring out these elements with with m these elements of war and magic and this sort of fairy tale feeling with the style of the film. <laughs> Hello, I'm reporting a grey squirrel, NY913684, near Fistler Rig Farm, High Warden. Was running in a grass field as I cycled in the Exxon today. Thank you. Bye. If I were to have shot it in a more verite style, you might have focused more on the the specific topic whereas if I if I shot it in this really stylized way it becomes more of a parable maybe at least that that's what I was going for and you read it more like a fairy tale rather than a specific uh, story <laughs>